Good morning, good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing? Yes, sir. I, absolutely. We want to welcome our visitors. We also want to welcome our state national friends that are joining us online this morning. Thank you, and welcome to church. And for anybody else out there that, that's watching that, you know, you've been seeking and searching. I was praying this morning about our audience out there, and, and there's a lot of them that are, they really are. They're, they're searching, they're, they're hoping, they're, their expectation is changing. And a lot of things going on in the world today, we know that by what we see in the headlines, some true, some not, some you better be wise of, because it'll get you caught astray. You know, people talk about, oh my goodness, and I'm, this just came out of prayer this morning, the Antichrist is already here, by the way, right. just so you know. Just so you know. That way if anybody says, oh my goodness, we're waiting. No, we're not. Antichrist is here. So saying that, just stay connected. Just stay connected. Amen? Yes. All right. We're going to go. Oh, uh, let's see. Man. I got so much even during, you know, when, when you're in the Word, you have to learn how to focus to hear God's voice for what people need because you get so much for you, for them. So we're going to go back to Genesis right now and then we're going to move forward. We were talking Tuesday about when God gave the blessing. So we're going to start there at Genesis 1. And I'm going to start at verse 20. He said, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and the fowl that may fly above the earth, and the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales. Sea cre and, and when you look this up, when he talks about that word great whales, it's talking about great sea creatures. Some were whales, some they estimated, some said to become 40 to 100 foot in size with the weight of about 300,000 pounds. That's pretty huge, isn't it? See, people think they know all of God's creation, and they don't. They don't. They're still struggling with finding out who they are. Right. I'm just saying. So we're going to see where this goes this morning. It's, and then he goes on and he says, um, uh, which the waters brought forth abundantly, verse 21, after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God said that it was good. And God, what? Bless them, saying, now he said, what? God blessed them, and when he blessed them, it was because he said something. Okay? And when you look at that word, when we talk about when he said something, it, here it talks about that he's declaring it, to utter it, to say it, to command it, to create it. Right? So here he's saying, and God bless them. Who? We'll go back up there and look at verse 21 and 20. Saying, be what? Fruitful and multiply. Fill the waters in the sea. Let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So God spoke and he blessed them. He said, this is what you're going to do by the blessing. He said, what I say, what I command, what I demand, what I utter, I've already spoke over you. Well, then he goes on and he says here in verse... Um, 24. And God said, there's that word again, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and the beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And here we go. God said, what? Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them. So he didn't leave woman out. Because he said, let's make man. Now, you know that word man, when you look at it in Hebrew, is Adam. Which is where they get Adam. So, here he's saying, let us make man in our image. Well, whose image? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Right? Right? But then he goes on and he says, uh, after our likeness, 
After what? Everything that he is. Character, right? Attitude. So you can imagine in the beginning what that may, if you can imagine, because sometimes I like to sit and try to imagine what that looked like. I mean, they give us all kinds, they drop hints all over. They weren't concerned about wearing anything because they weren't ashamed. They weren't concerned about who they had to impress because he just said what? He said, we're going to make him in what? Our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion. Who? Adam and, yes, Eve. She's there. She's just, you know, in him. And says, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that is creepeth upon the earth. So it's saying basically everything that God just created now, what? Belongs to them. He just spoke over them. He, he sat there and he uttered the blessing over them. And what was it? Well, he said, this is what we're going to do. Oh, wait, what? Well, let's keep going and see what he said. And God blessed them. Okay, so God said something. He uttered something, right? He said, this is what we're putting in order. And this is how we're putting it in order. Did he not? Absolutely. God said to them, who's he talking to? He's talking to Adam and Eve, even though she's not on the scene, right? He said them. So this, ladies, goes to you too. Don't let anybody tell you that it doesn't, because it does. I'm just saying. God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And then God goes on and says what? Behold, I've given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. So, so far... He's shown us what he's created. He's made the provision, right, before, but he spoke it first. See, he didn't just bring man and set him down and say, you know, wait a minute, i got to make all this. No, he created and made provision first. He already had the plan laid out. He already had purpose laid out. Your plan and your purpose is already laid out. It's just if you choose to do what he said when he told them back in verse 28 be fruitful multiply replenish the earth subdue it have dominion he didn't say over your spouse he didn't say over your neighbor he didn't say over people he said have dominion what over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over every living thing that moveth upon the earth we were talking about this every living thing that moveth upon the earth it's anything. It's disease. It's sickness. You get to. It says right there. I didn't say it. The Word said it. Well, that's Old Testament. I mean, Adam messed up and sin came. Yeah, but Jesus took it back and put us back in our original position, in our original intent. So here he is very specific about what he said. I don't think he left anything out, did he? I mean, it's so simple, but yet we've made it so hard and so complicated because we haven't really renewed our mind to what this says because people go, it's Old Testament. Yeah, but Jesus took us back to our original position, right? So that we shouldn't be ashamed anymore. See, sin brings shame. Sin brings condemnation. The Word brings conviction. The Word brings freedom. The Word brings wholeness. That's what the word brings. So let's keep going. Let's go to Genesis 2. And we'll go to verse 1. It said, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day. And he sanctified it, set it apart. Because that in it he had rested from all his work which he had created. God created and made. 
See, nobody can take the credit for that. God did that. So when people want to try to sit here and use the Big Bang Theory and all that, they're trying to give credit to something else that doesn't even exist. It was God that did that. There wasn't a big boom. So then he goes on and he's in verse 4 it says, These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered, what? The whole face of the ground, right? And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils and breathed and the breath of life. And man became what? A living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge. And then he goes on to tell, uh, talk about it. But what did he do? He put the man that he formed, where did he plant him? In the garden. Because, see, he was called to do what? He was called... If we go down to verse 15, it says, And the Lord God took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. That's huge that we understand that because so many times we forget that we have that same accountability too. We really do. So here God began to talk to me about cultivation. Well, we're going to look at the word dress. It means to work. Now, some of this might kind of challenge you because I, I, when I saw it too, I was like, what? Wait a minute. Well, see, we have to understand when God created something, we don't, until we get the revelation of it, it's going to challenge who we are. It's going to challenge our thinking, right? So he says here that he set him there to dress it. Well, that means to work, serve, labor. Do you all know it also means to keep in bondage? And some people go, oh, he wanted him to keep everything in bondage? No, he wanted to keep boundaries. We were called to keep boundaries, to guard, to dress. He put, man, put him in the Garden of Eden. She's not here yet. Eve is not here yet in the natural, but she's here inside. So she's a part too. How many of you know, I'll say it like this, and, and this may be kind of challenging, but think about it for a minute. Women, when you're carrying a child, you're listening to music, or if your tones go up or go down, the baby responds, right? Right? Well, what, where was Eve? Wasn't she in the womb of a man? Yes. That's why she's woman. She was in him, so she knew. Children know. Even John, when he was in the womb of his mother, knew when Mary come up with Jesus in her womb because he leapt. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Isn't that awesome? So here he's saying, in the go and the Lord God took man, put him in the garden of Eden to dress it. What? Not to keep it in bondage the way people want to think in their mind, but it's to keep order. To keep boundaries. To keep it what? The way God created it. It was to what? To grow to multiply, to replenish. Well, when you have a garden outside, don't you have to what? What are you doing when you put a fence around it? You're keeping it what? In bondage. You're protecting it. See, we forget because if this was part of the, not all, but part of the original intent, and Jesus now came and gave that back to us and put us back in that, where's the garden now? in us. It's our heart, right? So we are called. We are the ones that have been placed with the responsibility to what? Dress our garden. That means you've got to guard it. You've got to hold fast what you allow in it, what, what you sit there and allow to even try to entertain it. 
But we're not done because he says not only to dress it, but to what? Keep it. Now, when you look at this word keep, it means to watch, preserve, to have charge, to take heed to self, observe. Now, what's interesting when you look at the word, when it talks about, I looked in the 1611 Bible translation. I don't have one, but I, I had, I just saw my heart to look this up. And here, when he talks about to dress, it means to set in order. Well, what are you doing when you're holding something and you're protecting it? You're setting it in order. Are we called to set our homes in order? That means we guard what comes in our home, right? You don't just let a stranger come in, do you, if they come knocking on the door? Of course not. You were called to protect that. And then a better word that was used actually for when he talks about keep, it means to cultivate or to put through a finishing process. Well, isn't that interesting because he was called to do what? What were we called to do? Well, if we go back, and I always have everybody go back, go back to verse 28 in Genesis 1, said God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fishes of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So let me ask you, it's a thought. It's just a thought. But the enemy was cast out of heaven, correct? Jesus said he saw him fall like lightning, right? So you don't think that God didn't know the enemy, where the enemy was? Of course he did. That's why he told them. That's why he gave them instruction. Look, this is who you are and this is what you do. I've already put everything in place. And Eve was there. They were together, right? So here was the instruction when he said here, like I say, over in verse uh, chapter 2, 15, and the Lord took the man, put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, commanded the man, saying of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Again, yes, people take that and go, well, I mean, he told the man he did because the man was to what? He was here first. But Eve was still right there, right? Of course. But then what happened later on? It was a blame game, a shame game. And that doesn't fly no more. You know that, right? When you made Jesus your Lord and Savior, did he not take shame too? Yes. So I can't blame anybody for my shame because I don't have it no more. Does that make sense? See, some people want to still hold on to those things. That's a victim mentality. That's not someone who really has been set free the way they need to be set free because so many people, and I didn't know for years, and it's sad to say, but I've read the Bible and read the Bible, but for years I did not go to that part of the verse and really catch it. When he talks about making Jesus our Lord and Savior, and if we accept him, that he even takes the shame. I did not know that. And when it hit me, I actually cried because of the people that I actually had brought to, brought to the Lord and didn't tell them that part. I, had, I did. I, I felt horrible about that. So I made sure from then on out that I gave them what? The truth of that. Because, see, I got set free, but nobody told me about the shame either. So I carried that around and carried that what? Victim mentality. Because that's really what shame does. It, it really is. So is everybody good? Yes. Okay. So now, real quick, we're going to go and let's go to Proverbs 10. Because, see, also we have to understand when the Lord speaks a blessing over us, that word blessing is also means benediction. That means something that's spoken over you. Okay? In the Greek, it's, we use the word eulogy. That's saying good stuff, right? Let's see. Let's go to chapter 10. Oh. Okay, we'll just start with verse 1. We'll just start with verse 1. There's, there's a whole lot in all this, and it's like, man. 
says, the Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. Now, when we talked about righteousness, remember what righteousness is. People say, right standing with God, yes, but you can only be in right standing with God when you've received the divine approval of what he's already put out. See, he is righteous. That means he's already approved everything because it comes from what? Him. It's what he set in place, what he set in order. So when he talks about us, what are we called? We're called the righteousness what? Do you know when you hear that, that's telling you that you have been approved by him when you do it his way? That's his character. Do you have his character? Got to check, you know? So here... Uh, it says, treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. So, if he says that he won't suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, again, there's another part of the blessing. Right? Right? We won't lack for anything. He said, your soul, as long as you renew it, you're transformed by that renewing, right? You'll never lack for nothing. Because when we hear the word famish, what do we think? Hungry. Well, in him, you'll never go hungry. Not for the word. But he'll also take care of you in the natural, too. We went over that Tuesday. I mean, come on. He's given us everything we need. But... Okay. So if you say, well, I don't have food. I always have what I need because I pick up a telephone and I ask if I need it. That's what brothers and sisters are for. I remember when I was single going through that period of adjustment with finances and adjustment with my, just my health and everything. If I needed anything, I know where I could call and I know who I could call and I knew what was open to me. And that was what? That was the house, right? But I had to do my part, though. See, some people want to, they want a handout for nothing, but that's not what the Bible tells us. You know, I, I work. I work and do what I'm supposed to do. And then if I need something, then God's like, okay, I got you. It may not come out of a drive through It may come out of a cereal box. It may come out of a can. It doesn't matter. We'll tell the, oh, I can't go there just yet. So, because something I saw in the Word that I'll get to that was like, ooh, I've never seen it like that. So anyway, so he goes on, let's, verse 4. And he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in the harvest is the son that causes shame. Blessings are upon the head of the just. Upon who? The just. Why is that? Because remember, we can go back and we can see the blessings were already spoken over us, correct? Did God not do that in the beginning? So if he did it in the very beginning in Genesis and I give my life to the Lord and I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, so now the doorway is open for me to know the Father, guess what that means? That Genesis also belongs to me too, right? And in that, that means what? This is what you're going to do and you'll never lack for anything. And I went to Deuteronomy 28 on Tuesday and there's, there's conditions you're blessed in these places and you're blessed with these things, but you got to do something. You got to what? Diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, following his commandments, doing what he says. I like this. We were watching a, a sermon the other day and they were talking about the Beatitudes. And I, look, I've looked at the Beatitudes. Oh, bless this, bless that. He said, have you ever thought about it? He said, it's to be, then do, not to do. He said, you're not, 
you're not an <laughs> and I, I laughed because I thought it was funny so just bear with me he said you're not a bunch of doo-doos you're a bunch of be doos <laughs> and I was like I like that I like that he said think about it he said so many people think they're going to be blessed just out of the doing you're blessed out of being then doing what you've been instructed to do that's where it comes because it's a promise already he said he would do these things when we what first understand you have to be you are already being but what are you being come on because we're called not just to be but to do what he's instructed us to do okay all right let's keep going he says uh the memory of the just is blessed. Ooh, I like that. The memory. But the name of the wicked shall rot. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating, a prating fool shall fall. So there shows you there's two attitudes right there. You're wise or you're a fool. I have heard people get so mad, don't you call me a fool. I said, well, go look at what fool means. That's, a, that's your determination, what you figure out. I have been a fool. There are places in my life I was a fool. Come on. I have made some dumb choices. But now I've found that the only way I can be successful is I have to ask for wisdom. And where does that come from? Him. And wisdom is what? It's the instruction. Right? Again, those things that, man, I had to go, once I got understanding, it's like, oh, we got to do better about teaching. So then he goes on. In verse 9, he says, He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverteth his way shall be known. He that winketh with the eye causes sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. Well, my goodness. And the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. Why? Because what is righteous? It's what came from the Father. It has already been divinely approved. So if you say, according to the word, it's righteous, when it's in the correct context, right? Instruction for the situation, Again, this is where we're going. It's kind of like, have you ever thought about maybe we're going back and we're wrecking a lot of ships that really don't need to be sailing right now? I mean, I, I've had to go back and do that. I'm like, oh, man. I'm like, Lord. And he's like, we got to fix some things. Hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The rich man's wealth is, strong, is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their what? Poverty. Now here in verse 14, yes, Lord, it says, Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. What does the Bible teach us? Be swift to hear, slow to speak. Because what will happen if you let your emotions... Remember, we showed in Genesis where the feelers came in. And that was whenever they took of the fruit, and it's when Adam ate, then he said their eyes were opened. And that word open talks about the senses. And the main one was the eyes, but then it talks about the other senses. That's where feelers found... Yeah, there they are. There they are. But then we also read in the Bible and in the New Testament where what we train those babies... We get to train them. They don't train us. But that's what the world is in. They've allowed their feelings to train them. I can say what I want. That's my right. Well, go ahead and how do you feel after you've said it? Do you feel liberated? I did. For how long? About a day. And then what happened? You went back thinking about it again. See, we sit there and we also talked about where the Bible says you forget those things, what? That are behind. And that word forget means to what? Neglect. If you don't think about them and you neglect them, they go bye-bye. They go away. But see, if you keep stirring up stuff and you let your feelings in this and you respond, you don't understand the power that is in you and when you speak what it can do to you. See, somebody can be ugly to me all day. 
I have to determine, am I going to be moved by that? Am I going to give them that power? No. That's my, I have to make that decision, right? So what do I do? I take the power that I've been given and I say, no, this is who I am, right? So here it says, wise men lay up what? Knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of this, of him. Of him. Okay, then he goes on in verse 15. It says, the rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of the righteous tend to life. The fruit of the wicked to sin. The labor of the righteousness or the righteous tend to life. Well, who did Jesus say he was? He says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm what? The life. So where's my life? The labor. So when I'm working for Jesus, doing what he said, as he commanded, following instruction, whether it's in my life personally, whether it's in a building, whatever it is, what am I doing? I'm gardening something. Have you noticed that? It says, tendeth to life. That's powerful. I mean, it's interesting when you take all, we look at Proverbs and we go, oh, okay, it's the do's and the don'ts. There is so much in Proverbs that's amazing. And I learn something new every time I look at it. And when God was talking to me about cultivating and took me back where he put them in the garden, and real quick, I want to say, cultivating means to prepare or prepare and use for the raising of crops. Aren't we supposed to have fruit? Some fields are cultivated while others lie fallow. It's also to loosen or break up the soil about growing plants. Well, what are we supposed to be growing in our heart? Aren't we given seeds? Isn't the word seed? Right? And we develop that. Remember, we're even a seed because he says the wheat and the chaff grow together. They have to grow together and God says, I'll deal with it later. But we have to catch this. So he tells us when we what? When we do the work in verse 16, the labor of the righteous tendeth to life, the fruit of the wicked to sin. Man. He's in the he is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. But he that refuses reproof, he errs. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is what? Wise. How many of us are in a place right now, God's probably telling us, you need to learn to... He is with me. It doesn't mean what I know is not truth, what I know is not right. But right now, God knows where people's hearts are. He knows where their minds are. He knows where their soul is. So sometimes they're not ready. So he's like, no, not yet. Hold fast, not yet. I'm like, but Lord, it's, I know. So what do I do? I run to the Father, and we have a lot of conversations. And I'm like, now, Lord, am I getting this right? This is what this is, right? And he's like, yes. But here, let's talk about you for a little bit. Okay, fine, what? See, I have to divert it, what, to what now God needs me to see about me. Come on. <laughs> then he goes on in verse uh, 20. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the w wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for the one of wisdom. So guess what? The lips of the righteous will feed many, but there does come a time, God says, not now. There's a time, but not yet. It's like, okay, fine. Then he goes on and said, the blessing of the Lord, it make rich and add what? No sorrow to it. How many of us have heard that in the term of a gift? Okay, example, if I'm blessed by something, and I had to learn this, I, 
I didn't understand favor and I didn't understand blessed. So I thought when I got in debt, it was a blessing from God. Hear me out. Right. And when I found, man, I'm struggling with this blessing right now. I'm having to pay my car payment. This, I'm struggling. He, no, you had favor to obtain it. But do you have the favor to keep it? Do you trust God in the process of it to walk it out, doing what he says to do? Learning, culti what? Cultivating your faith to the next level. So I'm like, ooh, I've never seen it like that, but I don't like that one. I like to know it's a blessing. <laughs> but the blessing of the Lord is what? It maketh rich and adds no sorrow with it. A lot of people sit here and think what they're struggling with. This was a blessing. If, you, if it has sorrow with it, and if it's a struggle with it, was it really a blessing? Nope. Mm -mm. And that's hard for people to hear because they don't want to hear it. People throw the word out, oh, it's such a blessing. They're such a blessing. They throw it out too easy because they don't understand what that means. And I'm like, well, you say they're a blessing, but they seem to sure stir you up. <laughs> great sorrow. <laughs> yeah, great sorrow. So are they really a blessing? Because right there in the word of God, black and white, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. That doesn't mean just prosperity as far as money and stuff. That's not what that means. Even in your life, even in, it, it, I mean, it brings just what? Riches to you through that. Right? So he said, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow to it. So we have to stop and we have to question those things. Lord, was this really a blessing or was it favor? Or was it me? You have to be honest with yourself, right? Right? Everybody good? Are you sure? Okay, so... Oh, let's go to Romans 1. We're going to start verse 1. It says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. What now? He was, when was he separated? He was separated on the road to change, right? Was that when he was separated? Well, not in that very moment, but he had an experience, right? It came when he made the decision to separate himself. See, people think, well, God, can you separate me from this situation? Can't you? If, if we've been given everything that we need and we're supposed to what guard our hearts right tend our hearts cultivate those things then who's responsible for separating those things we are God just shows us what he says in his word about it right so here's Paul and then that last song we sang God had spoke a scripture to me and we'll look at that in a minute a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with what? Power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name among whom ye also are called of Jesus who is all of us right if you have accepted the call of salvation correct now we have received grace apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name and then he goes on, he said, among whom you are you also called of Jesus. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He wasn't talking to a small group of people. 
Well, who is he talking to? Well, what did it say? To all that be in Rome. So when we talk, we're not just talking to this group here. We're not just talking to those watching by video. Do you understand the power of a call in an area? Well, Eve was on the scene in Adam, right? She wasn't there in the natural, but she was there. So when he said he was blessing them and he was instructing them, that means she was there too. There's something about that. So when we sit here and we call all of those in this community, they don't have to be present for the call to go out. When we pray, when I pray, I call them out. From the north, the south, the east, and the west, I call them. Well, they can't hear you. It's not my job for them to hear me. It's his. Remember, one plants, one waters, but God gives the increase, right? So as long as I'm doing my part, I trust he's going to be what? Doing his part. And he can talk to anybody anywhere. But he needs somebody with a voice because what? They know his voice. They will know his voice. I know people that <laughs> they have been in places that there was no one around, but they heard a voice. And they found out later somebody somewhere, maybe across the world, was praying for them. I've heard those, I've heard those testimonies. I've heard, and when God gives somebody a name, that's pretty cool to me. And I've, God's given me names before, and then later it's like, oh, it's you. It's pretty cool when God does that. So just think when you're praying and you're doing and being who God's called you to be and you're doing it, you're shifting some things. You are. But you got to make sure what you're shifting, right? We're going to look at that too. So then we go on. Let's see, we're in verse 7. It says, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making requests, if by any means now at length I might have a what? Prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you that I may impart into you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. He's not saying I'm coming to you because I want to hang out with you. He said I'm coming to you and I'm praying to come to you so I can impart into you truths and what God has put in me. And what he's put in me I want to put in you. So that you can walk in the freedom because so many are in bondage because they got the wrong thing holding them. They need to find out who they are. That's what we teach, who you are in Christ. Well, we go back to the beginning to see what God created because that's where it started. That's where it started. But so many times, again, people want to forget that part, jump over to the New Testament. Ah, we don't need the Old Testament. No, go, go see what God's intention was because that's the foundation to the next part of why Jesus came and then that what? He continues to build on the foundation. Then the walls. See, the walls never got built. The foundation was still in work. So Jesus came back, what? Let's make the foundation solid. But if people aren't preaching and teaching right, they're not helping the foundation get solid. They're trying to build a wall somewhere, and the foundation's not ready yet. And it can be in the small things. Everybody good? Yep. Okay. Oh, let's see. So it says, For I long to see you that I may impart into you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. 
I am debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to the unwise. Such as much as in me is I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. So he's what? Letting them know. Man, I want to I want I want to share with you too. I want to preach the good news. You need it. See, some people get offended by the good news because it hits in the areas that need to, it needs to hit. But it's good news. Why? Not to keep you in bondage, but to what? Set you free. He says then, verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God into salvation to everyone that believeth the Jew first and also the Greek. So he's saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because what is the gospel? He says it right there. It is the power of God unto salvation. He says, I'm not the power of God unto salvation. It is the gospel. And I'm not ashamed of it because Paul had reminded people over and over and over again, you don't got to tell me who I was. I already know, but I forget those things. He also forgot the good things too, because he said, look, I know what I did here and I know what I did there. I ain't worried about that. I got to focus on what? What's ahead. Did he not? I've got to focus on what's that. that was great. That was good for that day. That was good for that week. That was good for that season. But guess what? There's more to come. So now I've got to look forward. I've got to what? Strive forward. I've got to move forward going for what? Reaching. I've got to reach. And that word reach means what? You've got to do something. You've got to stretch. And then he says, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, the Jew first and also to the Greek. No one was left out. No one. But I hear so many people want to sit here and they do, they went, well, he's not talking about me. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <clears throat> For therein is the righteousness of God revealed Therein is what? The righteousness of God, that divine approval, the very thing he's already said, this is it. You do this, you're good. Of God revealed. How is it revealed? From faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. I hear people go, I'm struggling with my faith right now. Oh, that means you're working on something. Because that's what faith does. Faith shows you where you're at, but not to stay there. Faith shows you what's going on, but you don't stay there. See, we're all in a place right now. We're walking something out by faith. But you got to make sure you don't stay there. Right? Well, how do I do that? Oh, we've been given instructions. So whatever it is, you've got instructions. Ask for the wisdom. with the understanding of the knowledge you're given. Because see, nobody taught me that either. So I'd be like, okay, I got this knowledge. I don't know what to do with it. Well, ask for wisdom. Well, what is that? It's the instructions. Oh, and then all of a sudden understanding comes. That's what that means. Oh my goodness. And how does faith come? Hearing what? The word. But does it always come from somebody else? It comes from what? hearing me say the word for myself. I just go and I hear. That's why when I'm over there on Sundays and I don't teach or preach, I got my notepad out and I'm writing. I've had some people go, why do you write so much? Because I'm going to take everything I can and I'm going to write it down and I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, uh, didn't see that before, Lord. You know what? I may not see anything yet, but I wrote it down because it was significant enough that you wanted to preach. And in that, then I'm going to hold fast to it and I'm going to, now what's going to happen? Everything's going to try to come as a distraction that can, if I let it, to get me off of that. That means there's a nugget there. There's something there I need. I do this every day. Every time I look at the Word, I want to see something. Lord, let me see what I didn't see before. See, i got to come with a desire because I'm what? I'm tending to something. I'm dressing something. I'm cultivating something. And I'm what? I'm keeping other things in bondage. That means I'm keeping it guarded. 
and that's my heart because right now I have a lot of people I love and boy when they going through stuff sometimes they want to mm, I'm like oh Lord I just want to step out and step over and he's like no you can't get back on over here because you don't want to see people go through things you it's hard to watch them go through things you love them so much but guess what my faith did not grow by someone doing it for me my faith right now is growing amazing in some things that it was hard for me to hear, but I had to hear. Why? It's not to put me down. It's what? To build me up. It's to get me past where I'm at because I'm not supposed to stay here. And it's like, you know, tell people you can come with me or you can stay, but I'm going to keep going. It's up to you. And when you finally start seeing what faith does, man, you want to more and more. So then he goes on, and it said, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in righteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest, what? In them. For God hath shown it unto them. Now wait a minute. Let's go back to 18 and look at this. He says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven, Against what? All ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. He didn't say the truth in righteousness. He said the truth in unrighteousness. So people can't say they don't know. Because that scripture right there just really kind of lets that out. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in who? Who's them? Well, who's he talking about? The unrighteous? No? The righteous. Okay. See, people see this, and this is where they can get confused. You got you to gotta really stop. That's why it's important when you study, you stop. Don't run through it. Take it. Grow it. And then I love when we can have these, what we call, you can call them roundtable sessions, one-on-one, -on -one, whatever. And you're like, hey, look, you know, the scripture says this. I'm not, I'm not sure. What are your thoughts on it? And you get someone else's thoughts on it, or you sit down together, and you break open the word together. Man, where's God? Right there. Where's the Holy Spirit? Right there. Where's Jesus? Right there. And I love it because there are some scriptures I'm like, I don't, you know what? I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. And if I don't know, I'm not going to tell somebody, I, oh, this is what it says. And I know this is what it means. And then I find out later, oh, that is not, that is not what it means. And then what? Ned, I'm the kind of person I feel bad for that. So what do I got to do? I got to change the way I, what? Think about it first. Then I got to change the way I what? Teach it, speak it. Because we're all called to what? Preach. We're all called to share the good news. All of us. All of us. So then he goes on, verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful and became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became what? Fools. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to the birds, four beasts, and creeping things. And I paused right there because I have not seen it like I did today. I said, wait a minute. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. And God reminded me of what he said in Genesis. We're to have dominion over what? Birds, beasts, creeping things, things in the ocean, all the earth, just not man. Right? 
And I sat there and I was like, I've never seen that like that. Wow. And it says, and it changed the glory of the uncorruptible God. And that word glory also talks about the character of God. God is not, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. He doesn't change. But they changed it into what? An image made like to corruptible man. So we are made in the image of who? Them. But they went and they what? Changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to a corruptible man. That's, that, you just got to sit on that one. That one, I just was like, wow. Wow. So just bear with me here. Verse 24 says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of what? Their own hearts. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Verse 25, who changed the truth of God into what? A lie. And worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Bam. Yep, drop the mic. Now let's look at this for a minute. So, and I had, I wrote this again. I was just, whoo, Lord. So the word creation here is the act or product Often of the founding of a city, creation, institution, always of a, a, a work, an ordinance. And then what I sat there and I saw when he was talking about creation, he began to talk about, and I've got to make sure I get this right. Um, <laughs> Hang on, I want to make sure I get this right. Because Danny did a teaching about this. And I'm not going to go into the teaching, but I do suggest you go back and listen on our YouTube channel because it's powerful. So I want to make sure I get this one correct. So, everybody good? Okay. So here, when he's talking about worshipped and served the creature more than the creation this word or, original formation building ordinance so I was looking at that and I was like okay so God began to show me about computers began to talk to me about TV began to talk to me about all the things that people look at to solve their problems because is that not, it says serve the creature. Yeah. Serve the creature. And so here, if a creature, when it's talking here, on a, uh, 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 it's by implication the thing that literally or figuratively has been built or created. Where the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, right? So everything, as far as all technology and all that, where'd that come from? That came, that came from him. But what happened over time? People got caught up in the creation. That's their focus. I have to have my phone because that's where my Bible is. And I keep telling people this, and it's already happened. We've talked about this. We've talked about this. Get you a hard copy of the King James Version Bible and don't get a brand new one. I suggest getting an older one because they're taking out Scripture. Mm -hmm. They're recreating Scripture according to what they want you to know. 
So I tell people, I have it on my, I love my phone as far as, okay, I got technology, I can look things up quick, but I always go back to my word. So whenever I saw in Genesis when he talked about creating the great whales, because I'd never seen that, I went back and I went all the way back to 1611. And then I went, what, all the way back to Hebrew. I am going back. I'm not going to say that, Lord, I've never seen that. I'm not saying it's not truth, but I want to know, is that what you really said? Is that what really was there? Because you just, when I see new things, I want to make sure it's not something somebody put in or took out. I'm going to go study because that's what the Bible says. Study, show yourself approved, workman unto God who need not be a what? Ashamed, Ashamed and what? Right. Rightly dividing the word word of truth see I'm going to rightly divide it and if I'm wrong then I get corrected but if I'm right then what have I done I've still what divided it out I'm still looking I'm still searching so here it says who changed the truth of God into a lie well that's pretty I mean that's pretty simple but then he goes on and worshiped and served the creature well, what are people doing right now? AI is hitting just everywhere. And people are what? They're now what? Worshiping that. They're now serving that. They're now telling us now, if you go into Sam's, you're not going to have somebody at the door checking your ticket anymore. AI is going to do it for them. See, people don't understand. We have been watching our phones, and we're getting a lot of things happening on our phones. And as soon as it does, bam, we deal with it. They're going to try to come in in every way. And it's like, you know what? I remember that day whenever they were doing the um, emergency test. We shut our phones off. We put them down, turned them off, TVs, everything. And you know what? I didn't miss it. It's convenient. Don't get me wrong. But I didn't miss it. So when he's talking about this creature, he's talking about everything that's been created and what people have forgotten is why it was created. Well, how do I know that? Because it's very clear. It says, they have served the creature more than the creator who blessed it forever. Whoa, wait a minute, what? Well, who's the creator? He is. See, people have gotten so caught up in what's been created, that's become their God. That's my problem. That's going to solve all my problems. I have a problem. I'm going to go on Google. I'm going to go on Google and find my answer. No, I'm going to go to the Word. I'm going to go to Jesus. See, Jesus was the Word made flesh. That's where I'm going. See, He opened up the door and He gave me access to the Father. So I can boldly go to the throne. This is the throne too, by the way. Because everything in this came from Him directly. Everything. Everything. But people have gotten so caught up. So when you look at this and you go back and you even go a little deeper in this particular word, creature, talking about a created thing, it comes from what has been created, formed, or shaped. Okay. You have to be wise. And how you can find out if where you're at with something, let something happen to it. Let something happen to it. First off, if God was behind it, right, blessed you, gave you favor in it, the blessings of the Lord make us what? No sorrow. No sorrow. But sometimes people get so caught up with stuff, things, I know. I find that with myself a lot, and I'm working on that. I'll find out, oh, that bothered me. Why? Well, I gave it a little more attention than I should have. Because, see, we've been given everything for a purpose. Yes, we're to enjoy them, but they're not to overtake us where we forget who created them. See, this also goes back to Okay. In the church, you know, we talk about how the church has become to a place of watered down gospel. It's become a place of entertainment. It's become a place of a social gathering. 
That's not what it was in the beginning. Well, but now we have all this technology, we have this, we have that, and what have they done with it? What it was created to spread the gospel, it spread in water, it spread in entertainment, but it's taken people out of the actual church. It's taken people out of the assembly, and God is very, very, we talk about this. He says, forsake not your assembly together. Why? Because, man, the power that's in the assembly. I've seen more people get set free from just, not even from always from a preacher, but from what? The assembling together of relationship, fellowship, talking one-on-one. But what was created to benefit has what? Turned into a lie. A song cannot set me free. I was listening to that song and I got set free. That song did not set you free. Jesus is the only one that can set you free. He can use something that's going to what? Connect to you. But don't give the song the credit. It's Jesus. It's the creator that gets the credit. See, that's where we get it wrong. And I know some people, that's kind of hard. No, it's truth. It really is. We talk about this, how God will do some things. And and I, I know they laughed at me when they first met me, I'm sure, because I would get excited when God would do some things. And I would be like, look, look what he did. Look what he did. And said, meh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, come on, (laughs) come on. And it was, but the thing was, what attention was being given to what, what was given and not the creator. I've learned whatever comes, he gets the glory. Not me, Lord, but you. And people have forgotten that because it says what? Who changed the truth of God into a lie. I didn't say that. Scripture said that. And, and said, and they worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who blessed it forever. And when he said amen, that means what? Well, it's finished, bam, there. But people get so mad if you do that now. They go, God is a God of love. Yes, he is. He loves us so much that he gave his only son for us. He didn't have to, but he did. He chose to. He chose to. Now, real quick, when we look at that word, and let me make sure, like I said, I want to make sure, because this is very, 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 very significant. See that word changed? That word changed is, uh, if you, and I probably will not pronounce it correctly, but I'll do my best for a reason. Meta, meta lasso. That means to exchange, alter, transformed. First word was meta. Pastor Danny did a teaching. It's an intense teaching. It's a good teaching. I'm not going into all that. Take a time. What's going on? Go on Legacy Community Church of El Reno. Find it. It's a very powerful, powerful teaching. Meta's huge because we look at what's out there now called meta, right? We've talked about the new, uh, um, what do they call that? With the, yeah, virtual reality. And what is it doing? It's taken everything and made it what? Fake or a lie. What does it do? It takes you out of what's real. into a metaverse, a place that you can create or someone has created for you so that everything your senses desire is there. So now you're living in a land that does not exist. Not really. So I'm just saying, so when when it says who changed, it didn't say what, it said who. It said, who changed the truth of God? So here again, remember, it's to exchange, alter, transform. Mm. Two more and then I'm done. Real quick, go to Luke 17. 
because I got to get these out. Got I mean, there's more, but I got to get these. <clears throat> okay, I'll just start at verse 11 real quick. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So they're not just recognizing him as Jesus, but they're also recognizing him as what? Master. <clears throat> Have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And it came to pass that as many, that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God, fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to what? God to save this stranger. And when he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith had made thee what? Whole. Didn't mean the others weren't healed, right? But this one was made whole. Why? Because he, he recognized the real priest. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. Isn't it funny because you can have a whole multitude of people, but you may only have one recognized. I've been there, and I've been in the multitude. I've also been there and I've been the one. But I'm telling you, in the days and times we're in right now, it's going to get to that place that you're really going to have to pay attention. You're really going to have to understand and discern. That's why it's so important that we get in this and not rush through it, but really read it, understand it. So then he goes on. Let's see here. Verse 20, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with what? Observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So let's look at this. So he's sitting there and he's saying, Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. Oh, it's over there. It's over there. It's over here. It's over there. No. Are you born again? So where's the kingdom of God? within you. So do you know if the kingdom of God, do you really get if the kingdom of God is within you, that where you go people are in the midst of the kingdom. Because what? It's within you. And you carry it. Have you ever noticed people can get set free when you're around? And I've proven it. I've talked about it. I've given a testimony of a young lady. We were from here to D. I was not laying hands on her. I was not touching her. She came to me wanting something that was of the world, and I told her I wouldn't be a part of it because I told her who she was and the value, and she got healed in that very moment. She screamed. The whole building heard her. Couldn't help that. But I didn't touch her. Because why? I've got the kingdom within me. I carry the kingdom. So if it's within me, she was in what? The midst of the kingdom as well, right? Come on. Neither shall they say it's over here, over there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. When you're born again, it's within you. But do you know that? Do you get that? Oh, come on now. So everywhere we go, do you have an expectation of God moving through you? We see it where we go. It's pretty cool. So you got to find out. You got to check yourself. Hmm. I saw that and I was like, hey. But here's what I hear a lot of Christians say. Well, let's go back up, up one verse. He says, verse 20, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. How many of, and I've been one, so I'll admit it, you're nervous. 
There's fear there. You know, there's no fear in the kingdom. Right? But I had fear. And I'm like, hey, I know who I can hook you up with. Is that person over there? Oh, they can help you with that. They can talk you right through it. Oh, yeah. See, what are you doing? Now you're denying the kingdom that's within you. You're saying it's over there. It's not here. It's over there. It's over there. I know because I remember being in a place that I allowed people to sit there when I got born again, I was so on fire for the Lord. Man, I didn't care. Kick me out, throw me down. I didn't care. I'm going to preach the gospel with everything in me. Then over time, I let other people, and we're not talking the world either. We're talking people in the church, begin to affect me. I let that happen. Nobody gets the blame for that but me. Okay? Nobody but me. And I did. I let them shut down a lot of me. A lot of the gift within me, and God has been talking to me very strongly about this, and I've been, I'm like, you know what? And, and the Lord finally, it was like, is it going to be all or nothing? I'm like, okay. And he said, and you're going to have to be okay with what happens from it. Because it's not you doing it, it's me through you. And that's on them. So I've been working on some things, and I'm like, okay, Lord. All right. Ooh, let's do this. Let's do this. So here he says, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, verse 21, neither shall they say, lo here, lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. I'm telling you, when you stand up and you say, you know what? What's going on? <clears throat> Trust the Holy Spirit. He'll bring to you what you should already have in you. But if you don't know, then you be honest with them. You know what? I don't know. Because what you're doing is you're actually not pushing the kingdom away. You're actually opening yourself up to more of the revelation of the kingdom. Because you're going, I don't know, but let's go find out. Or I don't know, but I will find out. And I'll get back with you. And then go do it. Go find out. There's times that people have come to me and I'm like, I don't know. But I tell you what, I'll find out and I'll get back with you on that. Or I've even done conference calls. I don't know, but I know somebody that does, so I'm going to sit there with you. And we're going to do this together. Go ahead. And then what? I'm opening to learn too. Now, I will tell you this. I have also had people, because I didn't know, okay, they didn't look to me anymore for the answers. They looked to the one that gave us the answers. Okay, go for it. At least somebody was there to give them the answer. And me, I'm like, great. See, don't make it about ourselves. Can't make it about ourselves. And one last thing real quick, go to Acts. Let's see. Uh, 16. Acts 16. And I'm closing on this one. And we're going to go to verse uh, 25. Now, this was when Paul and Silas were thrown in the depths of the prison, okay? They didn't want to hear them. They didn't want to look at them. Have you ever realized why they throw them so far back in there? That way they couldn't hear them. That way they did, couldn't put their eyes on them. They really didn't have to deal with them, right? Here, we'll just put them back. <laughs> and I heard this this morning, and then when the song, the last song played, I went, yeah, that's perfect. He said, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to who? God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, I love it. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Man. Man. People want to be set free. What a perfect example of what can take place when you're so sold out 
not to yourself, but to this, to live and be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, to be approved to a place that you know what? I want to glorify you, God. And man, I don't care where I'm at. I don't care what I'm in. I'm not looking at that, but I'm going to give you praise because when I begin to give him praise and all of a sudden something begins to happen within me, all of a sudden I begin to what? neglect the old things and what's happening. All of a sudden new things are happening. Things in me that I know are truth are coming back to me. That's what happens in this place. So it says, and then suddenly there was a great earthquake. Man, being so sold out for Jesus and for what has happened and who you are that you can actually create an earthquake? Two people. Two. It didn't take a city. It didn't take fracking. It took two people that praised him so much and were so passionate that the earth responded. Everything in that place responded. The foundation responded and began to shake. That tells you even the foundation didn't like the bondage that was there. And then what happened? And immediately, it didn't say gradually. Er, er, it's like, I think it's opening. See, they didn't care because when that comes through, it blew the doors wide open. And then here's the beautiful thing of it. When they demonstrated the power of the word that was within them and turned it to him, telling him who he is, praising him for what he's done, everyone benefited. Yeah. Every one of them. Everyone was loosed in that moment. Did they understand why? Probably not fully, but I tell you what, what a conversation they were going to have. Man. See, are you praising God in every situation? Do you praise Him in the valley? Do you praise Him on the mountaintop? We, we've been talking in New Way about how Elijah got into such a deep depression. And he's like, yeah, but Li Elijah was on the mountaintop. Oh, we're all going to hit a mountaintop. But what happens after we hit the mountaintop? Ba -doom. But that's where you've got to learn to stay focused on Him and quit feeling sorry for yourself. But I was on the mountain. Well, guess what? Now you're down in the valley. It doesn't matter. If you're focused on him, are you really going to see the difference? Come on. Because what have we done in this place? When COVID hit, did we look at it and say, oh, no, we kept going. Kevin kept giving God the glory, kept moving. I talk to people now that they tell me what they went through and they said, we would have done it differently. I said, but here's the thing. If it happens again, guess what? Do it differently. Right. Do it differently. Man. See, sometimes we get so caught up in us and we get caught up in the creation, the things that have been created and formed and shaped, that we forgot the creator. Mm. Come on. What do you mean? Mindsets. Mindsets. Because if my mindset is not to the truth, the life, the way, right here, my freedom, then my mindset with creation will get me in bondage and not the right kind. Everybody good? All right, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word, Father. We thank you that you've already spoke to us, Lord. You've already blessed us, given us instruction. And, Father, that we heed to the instruction, Lord. We be doers of the word. Glory to God. We be doers. Yes. And not just workers only. But that, Lord, every time we open up the word, Father, that you begin to give each one of us revelation in greater measure of who we are, what we're called, the purpose that you have. Purpose never changes. And Lord, I just thank you for those being set free. I thank you, Lord, for those that you have called to this place. We continue to call and welcome them. We continue to acknowledge them. 
just like you did when Eve was within Adam. Lord, and we just continue to praise you for all that you've already done, putting our focus back on you, glory. And Lord, we ask you to bless the food that we're about to partake to be nourishment to our body, Father. And we love you so much. Amen.